breaking news, study finds one in three Americans have been implanted with RFID chips most unaware. Now, this is a Wyoming Institute of Technology report, and they have determined a shocking one in three U.S. citizens have been implanted with RFID tracking devices. Literally, RFID microchips. Now, the article recently published details a study of almost 3,000 people. And almost 1,000 of them were implanted with an RFID chip. Most of them didn't even know they had the chip inside of their body. Now, this comes among a growing amount of predictions that the RFID tracking grid network will be mandatory implanted in everybody that wants to be a part of the system of you know, fiat currency, essentially, I guess you could say. Anybody that wants to, to barter. I mean, you can even read in the Bible, it talks about the mark of the beast. I was warned about it 25 years ago. And John Bruegel, Ph.D., offered the following. Now, we were motivated to perform this study by all of the public interest in RFID implantation implantation and fears that it would be commonplace. It turns out, in fact, it's already commonplace. We found a shockingly high number of Americans are carrying these RFID implants in their body. The overwhelming majority of these individuals were completely unaware that they had been implanted. I hope that this study causes us to take pause as a society and truly consider the ramifications and implications of human RFID implantation. Why do I keep saying that word wrong? Implantation. Nanny, 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 nanny. Now, the analysis of radio frequency identification chip. Here's the abstract. Population Midwest. They contain 958 individuals from Illinois, Iowa, and Wisconsin. Population Northeast, they had 987 people from Maine, Rhode Island, New, New Jersey. The Southwest, they had a little, they had 1,010 people from Arizona, Nevada. Volunteers were recruited using standard methods and compensated in a manner consistent with industry standards. All test subjects were treated in compliance with institutional codes of ethics and standards. Now, the individuals were subjected to full-body RFID chips scanning using previously detailed protocols. The test subjects were scanned either in the nude or in minimal undergarments to avoid interf interference. Demographic and personal history screening test. The subjects provided demographic and personal history, including medical history through standard forms. All personal and medical information was coded in a double-blind manner to protect privacy in compliance with institutional standards. Now, the analysis and result 997 RFID positive individuals were identified out of 2955 that were screened. That's about one in three. Additionally, two fillings were identified as the, the predominant location for the chips. 57% were located in fillings. Now, this article is available at the goodlylawfullsociety.org. And if you actually click on the link that takes you to the Wyoming Institute of Technology website, that page has disappeared. It's not there anymore. It's gone. So I started doing some more research. I was, I was you know, I was like, okay, there's got to be more information than just this Wyoming Institute of Technology website. And just everything kept taking me back to this site. And there's dozens, if not hundreds, of other news forums and outlets that have taken this article 
from this website and ran with it. Not from the website that I'm telling you right now, where I read the article on, the, the goodlylawfulsociety.org, but the actual Wyoming Institute of Technology, that's where the article originally was. Now it's not there anymore. A bunch of websites took that article, went with it, made up their own articles on it. I got several requests to watch a YouTube video that discusses the one in three Americans are unwillingly, unknowingly tracked. Well, let me tell you a little bit about the Wyoming Institute of Technology because they've got a nice website. And you go to the website, and at first glance, it's like, hmm, okay. I mean, it looks, I mean, it doesn't look great. It looks okay. It actually, compared to other universities, I wouldn't say it's nearly as nice as a university, but maybe a small community college or something like that. Wyoming Institute of Technology. Let me tell you a little bit about the Wyoming Institute of Technology. Well, they were founded in 1943 as one of America's first independently owned nuclear science facilities. The Wyoming Institute of Technology has been at the forefront of scientific research and advancement in the United States. So, let's do a little bit of, let's do a little more research on that. Okay, so they they've been around since 43 independently owned nuclear science facility. Their mission statement has remained the same since they were handed a very first government contract in 43 to always seek answers to the greatest challenges of the day. So they employ scientific method and cutting-edge research to ensure only the highest quality results at all times. Now, I got kind of bored reading that. I was like, okay, let's go to something else. This is, this is kind of boring. Let's go into the projects that they're working on. So, currently, this is straight off their website, currently many of our projects are classified as we work mostly with private sector companies and defense industry contractors, often using any number of closely guarded trade secrets. However, some of our projects have received enough public funding that we are legally obligated to list those projects here. You're like, oh, cool, what is it? Let's hear about this. Well, the first one is Compound MT47B103, or MT-Flow, referred to as simply MT-Flow. This remarkable chemical substance could revolutionize the way we clean up oil spills, dispose of toxic waste, and even make nuclear coolant water re reusable and fit for human consumption by FDA and EPA standards. Mount Flow is so safe, in fact, that it was recently government approved for human safety testing in Micronesia and New Guinea. Wow, I mean, that's, geez, that's really human consumption after it kept nuclear fuel rods cool? Sounds pretty remarkable. Research into Mount Flow began after the Gulf oil spill after some liberal environmental watchdogs made the bogus claim that the oil cleanup chemical core exit, which WIT helped develop in 98, is toxic and harms oil cleanup workers, despite strong evidence to the contrary. WIT was commissioned in October 2012 by BP, Halliburton, and funding from the United States government to develop Mount Flow as an eco-friendly, human-safe alternative to core exit. Today, Mount Flow meets all of the requirements for the human environmental safety standards of both BP and Halliburton and is nearly prepared to clear its final hurdles with the EPA, who unjustly failed our product after testing on lab, rate, on lab rats caused alleged mutations. Hmm. Now, the next compound we're going to hear about here, folks, is called the compound GM02447NU, or gm -new U. Most of us look into the mirror and feel upset with our appearance. From time to time, wouldn't it be great if you could take one pill and make your aesthetic physical appearance better in only a matter of a few days? gm -new U will make that dream into a reality in the near future. Working closely with pharmaceutical giant GlaxoSmithKline, cosmetic leader Lancome, and GMO innovators at Monsanto, WIT has developed a revolutionary pill which will 
if taken daily, can actually change your body in the genetic level, letting you naturally shed weight, grow muscle mass, regrow lost hair, even lose unsightly pimples and warts. GM New You will make patients look and feel better than they've ever felt before. This product probably sounds too good to be true, but just trust us, it's coming your way soon. Using GMO, genetically modified organism science, WIT was able to show staggeringly impressive and consistent results with some of our volunteer human test subjects, most of whom are Hollywood celebs, including Michael Jackson, Gary Busey, Tara Reid, and Charlie Sheen. Michael Jackson's clone, ladies and gentlemen. The e-condom, this is another technology they're working on, the e-condom, when WIT started to tackle the reinvention of the condom in 2012, we were recognized that there were three key facts reflecting in the initial polling data. Most men hate wearing condoms. Men primarily wear condoms to avoid unwanted impregnations, and men would gladly reuse condoms if they felt it was safe to avoid both the added cost and the embarrassment of going to convenience stores and asking for them. Speak for yourself. It was these factors that led to our invention of the e-condom. The, these small electronic device clips onto the scrotum with no pain or discomfort and emits pulses of electricity directly into and through your balls, which both disorient and slow the swim speed of your semen, rendering you 100% infertile while wearing the device, which while allowing you to still enjoy powerful, pleasurable ejaculations. Hello! The e-condom does not affect the transmission of sexually transmitted diseases, but if you and your partner are both fully tested for STDs, why not wear a condom that fully washable and reusable has zero impact on filling and has no risk of breaking or clogging up the toilet? I mean, geez. Can you think of anything better, folks? And while WIT waits for FDA approval, we're still improving on our designs. A Bluetooth emitter could allow you to share your conquests on Facebook or Twitter during and after your sexual activity. While we are also considering a tryptophan emitter, a tritoptin emitter, whatever that is, which can make women drowsy after intercourse, allowing you to roll over and take a nap like you want to. Oh, I know that is a kind of like when you eat turkey, I guess, right? The byproduct of that essentially and take a nap like you want to rather than having to stay up for an hour talking about your feelings or Kath Catherine Heige movies or whatever other nonsense your significant other feels like boring you with pending charges and or removal to government regulations now there are side effects recorded during human testing that include but are not limited limited to bloating Gasness, diarrhea, violent coughing, cotton mouth, restless leg syndrome, constipation, severe genital itchiness, dizziness, impaired vision, hearing problems, sleep loss, suicidal thoughts, vomit, crazy vomiting, sudden short-term memory loss, minor long-term memory loss, burning sensations in breasts and or testicles, gout, panic attacks, violent erections, loss of consciousness, bad breath lower back pain, and even death in some rare cases. Are you starting to feel more concerned about the one in three Americans being microchipped, or do you think that, uh, what do you think of the study now? Now, let's go into the jobs here. Their jobs are, I'm telling you what, do you want to be a test subject? Are you interested in science, and do you want to contribute to the fascinating new medical research that could potentially save the world and lives. WIT has partnered with Monsanto, Pfizer, and Setpoint Medical to deliver an exciting new drug designed to offset the almost non-existent side effects of genetically modified organisms used in the agriculture industry, which is rapidly developing remarkable technology advancements like the corn products that actually create pesticides in your gut without even being sprayed with pesticides. It's incredible. Now, you must be a non-smoker between the age of 18 and 65. 
With no history of heart or brain issues or drug or alcohol dependence, only U.S. and Mexican citizens may apply. Uh, you have to be willing to consume nine pills per day for 30 days, consecutive days, reporting to one of their lab techs in Cheyenne, New York, or Chicago, or L.A. every seven days for 49 days. During these lab visits, a professional medical researcher, one of theirs, will make vital they'll test your vital signs collect stool and urine samples ask you to walk or run on a treadmill administer iq tests and psychiatric evaluations take blood samples both while you're eating genetically modified foods now at the researcher's discretion they may ask you to sexually stimulate yourself on camera during those visits now all subjects will be asked to sign waivers non-disclosure agreements and other documents that are vital the compensation, these subjects are going to be paid 50 bucks per laboratory visit with a bonus of $100 upon completion of your final lab visit on the 49th day. Now, it doesn't offer any bonuses or other compensation benefits of any kind. Now, there's a custodian third shift available. And you have to have, here's the, uh, the job includes moving medical waste weighing from 100 to 400 pounds in black bags that can range from 4 to 6.7 feet. Occasionally, they're disposed of in rivers, you know, as a part of their environmental experiments. And candidates could actually think on their feet and improvise should the bags fill to sink properly, according to this article, or actually the website from the WITscience.org department. Yeah, it's... It's the Wyoming Institute of Technology, ladies and gentlemen. The Wyoming Institute of Technology, Wyoming Institute of Technology. Wow. I'm telling you. It's a good thing I actually research some of these articles that come onto my desk, I should say. Because, like I said, there's several people that wanted me to watch this video about how one in three people have been secretly microchipped. And I'll tell you, I wouldn't doubt it. Now, I'm going to be I'm going to be serious here for a minute. I wouldn't doubt it if everybody has some type of tracking device embedded in them somehow. I mean, I, I've been doing some serious research into edible tracking devices, edible RFID antennas. I've got the PAT numbers on it. Matter of fact, I'll share that with you before, before we close out here. And I'm also going to get into some stuff that's even more intense than that, essentially. All right, let me just let me just share this with you. Okay, here's the PAT number. This this is legit right here. This is a system to monitor the ingestion of medicines. It's been around a long time, costs them less than a penny to make these things, and it's called True Tag is the name of the company. True Tag is the name of the company. Now, but this is the actual patent number. And here's another patent for RFID antenna for in body devices. And I want to get into this with you guys pretty deep on the next podcast without the attempted humor at the beginning. So Hopefully, people that watch this will pick up on it. I can't wait to read the comments. Remember, just like the military nanobots in Conspiracyville. The conspiracy continues. Leakproject.com. Be the change you want to see and question everything.